Hello and welcome back to Dano Does Things. My name is Dano and thank you very much for coming to hang out with me here today. If you have never seen one of my videos before, I do a lot of crafting and art tutorials and I just recently hit 500 subscribers. If you're one of the 500 subscribers, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. And if you are not one of the 500 subscribers, why not join? If you just want to check out the tiny house craft storage, you can definitely just jump to the timestamp below, but I would love it if you stuck around, got to know me a little more. I'm not often in my videos, you usually just see sort of my hands floating on a table, but I thought I would introduce myself a little bit. I started this channel about almost two years ago now with the intention to give myself time to craft and be creative when I wasn't really making it a priority in my life. I always liked as a kid to craft and I was always working on some kind of project and as an adult, I didn't really spend as much time. But I think being creative is really good for me and for everybody and so I wanted to give myself the excuse to spend time crafting every week. So I started this channel. I started my channel with the mantra of learn, have fun, and be creative, and to this day that is still what I'm here for. I love learning new things, I've learned a ton of new crafts like needle felting as well as a lot about video editing. If you go back and look at some of my old videos, which you probably shouldn't, but if you do, I'd like to think that my video editing has come a long way since then. I always wanted to keep having fun with my videos, I never wanted them to feel like a chore or an obligation, I just want to do the things that I want to do each week and just enjoy myself. And I think that being creative is just kind of good for your soul too. It's like getting a breath of fresh air and just stretching these muscles in your brain that maybe don't get used all the time. I called the channel Dano Does Things. Dano is my childhood nickname and I went with Does Things because I like to do a lot of things. I am a serial hobbyist and so I like to dabble. I didn't want to restrict myself in any way and say just Dano does art or Dano does crafts because who knows what I might do in the future. I certainly don't. But that is enough about me for now. I may do a more about me video sometime in the future, but for now let's get into some tiny house crafting storage inspiration. My house is less than 600 square feet and I am a maximalist and a hobbyist and so I needed to create a lot of storage space for myself. All of my crafting and filming supplies is all in either this desk or this dolly or in this cupboard so let's get into it. First up my cork board. Here is where I display some of my favorite pieces that I've done recently. I used to think that hanging up your own artwork was kind of narcissistic, but if you don't enjoy the art you're making, why would you make it? I also have a few sentimental items pinned to the board and the first two pairs of scissors that I own. Please don't count how many pairs of scissors that I own. Next is my desk. If you've seen my old videos, you may recognize the original wooden top, but I didn't love how it looked on film. So now I've taken a piece of particle board and covered it in white wood grain contact paper and just clamped that on top. I should get a piece that covers the whole table, but wood is very expensive and I am also lazy, so I just make this work. In this side drawer, I have all of my paper, watercolor pads, tracing paper, construction paper. It's not super organized, but we can just hide that away. This dolly cart holds all of my paintbrushes for watercolor and acrylics and all that. And I've also got a lot of markers and pens and pencils all organized in this grid stand thing. I've also got some paint pens which need to be stored horizontally so they are here too. I have this little dish with stuff that I grab a lot like erasers and pencil sharpener and my earphones apparently. I've also got some notebooks for quickly writing down ideas or doing sketches when ideas come to me. There is also this small storage box and bag so when I'm working on a specific project long term I can just put all of like my thread colors say in one spot so I can grab them quickly and work on that one project. The bottom two levels holds my filming equipment so it's a bit bare because I'm using it right now but I keep all of my cords and mics and lights here and I try to keep it pretty organized because cords and little adapters and SD cards get tangled or lost super easily. Bonus, I also keep my kalimba here. I am not very good, but it is fun to play. Mm -hmm. 
Now on to the closet. Please forgive the filming angles, it's kind of tight in here. First a note in the odd setup, I have a trap door that goes into my creepy basement, so I had to work around that to give it clearance to open and close. I also have some non-crafting stuff in here like my vacuum and a stepladder. The shelves are nearly 9 feet tall and I am very short, so it is a must have. I also have my broom and Swiffer all neatly stored off the ground. For things I use a lot, I love these pegboards. It keeps everything organized and in sight. We will start with the small pegboard on the left. Those bottom hooks usually hold my tripod, and above that we have a lot of craft paper which I use for making patterns and wrapping presents, and of course some matching string. Up here are my watercolor sets. I have my nice Windsor & Newton travel set, and my homemade set that I made from an ice cube tray. Super great hack, by the way. I also have my metallic watercolors, which I don't use a lot, but they are very cool. Up top I've got pliers for making earrings or doing general plier things, and some jewelry wire. I've got more wrapping paper pieces and string, and then some really cool cross stitch patterns that my aunt just sent me that belong to my great aunt, and I am really excited to try those out. On to the big pegboard. Up top we have embroidery hoops, some with finished projects and some waiting empty ones. Then I have patterns that I thrifted. I love thrifting patterns, but they're so hit or miss. Sometimes half the pattern is missing or it's torn or whatever, but nonetheless I'm hoping to get to some of these this summer. I also have all my knitting needles and crochet hooks and apparently some loose sticks because why not? I have my black and white embroidery thread out here to remind myself not to buy black and white embroidery thread every time I go shopping. I also have a lot of rulers, some for sewing, some because they were small and cute and I like them, just lots of different sizes. Here are the rest of my scissors, no need to count them, but there are some for fabric and some tiny scissors that are great for small crafts, and I also have my rotary cutter and my small cutting mat. In these little containers I have my sewing stuff so I can easily just grab the container right off the wall and have all my bits and bobs ready to go. And then this giant thing here is my needle felting block. I have smaller ones as well but it was great upgrading to this one and it takes up a lot of space. Over here are my sketchbooks and little watercolor books as well as some small dishes for holding water or mixing paints and my brush cleaner. I also have a little container with all my painted pennies in it, and this little pouch here has a hole punch kit in it. I keep so many little bags and boxes and use them as craft storage. Finally down at the bottom I've got all kinds of tape and ribbons, my little duster and dustpan, and the loom I made from a picture frame. I am not good at looming, but that is okay. Now we're down to the bottom section of the shelving unit. I have all of my fabric stored here, rolled up so I can see what's there and just grab it quickly. Most of this is thrifted if I never have to go to an actual fabric store, I will be very happy. These shelves are also pretty deep so I tuck some of my scrap fabric behind of the larger rolls. Over here I have my wool roving storage. I modified this box so I could have little cubbies for each color and keep it all tidy. And then in this old comforter bag I have all my felt. It's not super organized, but at least it's all in one place and contained. There's also some clamps and my contact paper beside that. Then tucked between the shelf and the wall is my big cutting mat, which is frankly a mess. I also have this map of a ship I made for a D&D game, which has nothing to do with crafting, but I think it is cool. This first drawer is dedicated to paint. I have watercolor, acrylics, and gouache all neatly in these glass jars. I also have some dye and some gesso and stain and other random paints. The drawer above that is the glue drawer. My ancient glue gun, fabric glues, just so many different kinds of glues. Also a few extras that I don't use a lot like my three hole punch and slide cutter. This over here is the sundry drawer, again using random bags and boxes as storage. I've got my button jar, and there's also zippers, elastic, bias tape, ribbons, snaps, all kinds of mostly sewing related items. Now this area is again not crafting, but my Dungeons and Dragons section. I am a DM and a player, so I have a lot of books and notes and papers. I also have lots of dice, mostly purples, nice and organized. 
I have all my monster cards and in the drawer I have dice bags, dice trays, and maybe more dice. Don't tell anyone. Back to crafting, this shelf has painting trays which are just thrifted plates as well as paint rags and sponges. I have some canvases and also my stamp carving kit which I have not touched since I did a video on it. Behind cupboard number one is tools. I always seem to need my drill or hammer or screwdriver or something so it's easy to grab and easy to hide here. Behind cupboard number two is my sewing machine. I keep it in the cupboard so it doesn't get dusty. And yes, I did buy my machine for 40 bucks when I was 14. Why do you ask? All right, on to the upper shelves. Here we have all of my yarn. If you are an avid knitter, you're probably like, what a small collection, but I am not very good at knitting or crocheting, so. This shelf is pretty random. I've got my receipts to be filed, random things like feathers and moss, some sculpting clay, and a box back there holds all the extra pegs for my boards. Now over here are my favorite containers that keep all my little supplies so organized. The top one has all my needle felting needles, earring sundries, and a lot of unfinished little felting projects. The other one is embroidery thread and all my embroidery accessories. My big bags of wool roving are also shoved in the back there and my old tiny felting surfaces live here too. Now since I can barely reach these top shelves, they are quite random. Lots of little boxes that I just didn't want to throw out, some bags and foam sheets. I also have some random paperwork storage and a screen for making paper. And this is a big folder that I store some of my old projects in. And then way up top, I have all of my puzzles and games stored, as well as my Ada cloth and two thrifted items that are super cool, but I do not have the space to display just yet. Finally, my backpacks organized from super intense to super chill. I love backpacks and they're way better than purses or satchels and I will fight you on that. Thank you very much for watching my crafting storage tour. I hope you found it interesting or maybe gave you some ideas and I'll see you next week. If you want to jump straight into the tiny craft, tiny craft. I called the channel Dan. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching my little crafting room. It's not a room, it's a closet. <laughs>